that the climate crisis is getting worse and coming on faster. Major cities underwater, unprecedented heat waves, terrifying storms, widespread water shortages, the extinction of a million species of plants and animals. And this is not fiction or exaggeration. Gugaro, 이 야심찬 목표를 실현하기까지 아직 갈 길이 먼 것이 현실인데 이를 조금 앞당길 수 있을 기술로 주목받는 곳이 있다고 합니다. 공기 중에 이미 배출된 이산화탄소를 없애는 획기적인 기술로 주목받는 곳이 있다고 하는데요. Yes, well, in Stockholm, Sweden, there is a restaurant, and at this restaurant, workers they wear special aprons. <목소리> These are carbon capturing aprons. They're treated with an amine containing solution and that allows them to pull carbon dioxide straight from the surrounding air. So what's the next step? There must be another process. Yes, there are other steps. The aprons are taken to a greenhouse where they're heated to 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. And this releases the captured CO2. The carbon is then used by the plants as food during photosynthesis. So the carbon dioxide emitted from the aprons, they're used to grow vegetables in the restaurant's basement greenhouse. And then those vegetables, they're used as ingredients by the restaurant. So it's like a loop. Wow, that's amazing. 어, 배출되는 탄소를 포집해 탄소가 필요한 식물에 직접 줌으로써 탄소 배출을 줄인다는 건데 널리 활용만 된다면 탄소 감축이 정말 유용할 것 같은데요. So this could be a potentially a game changer. Yes, that's what they say, a game changer. The aprons, they were developed by the Hong Kong Research Institute of Textiles and Apparel and that was in collaboration with a major clothing company. I spoke to HK Rita to learn more about this project and its potential future impacts. decided that what we need to do is not only reduce the impact on the environment with our existing practices, but begin to develop new practices that can be um, carbon neutral and that can be more uh, supportive of biodiversity. We, this is our first iteration of this material, and, and we developed it basically into a t-shirt. And this t-shirt, for instance, in this form factor, is about uh, one-third to one-fourth of a tree uh, a day. In, in carbon uh, dioxide absorption efficiency. 전 세계 의류 생산에 따른 연간 이산화탄소 배출량은 전체 탄소 배출량의 10%를 차지한다고 하는데요. 이는 무려 전 세계 국제선 항공기와 선박에서 발생하는 탄소보다 더 많은 양이라고 하죠. 네, 정말 많은 양이죠. Researchers at HK Rita, they say they're working on further developing this technology like creating a detergent that can help sequester or isolate the carbon dioxide in a solid form so it's not released back into the environment. And this will help reduce fashion industry emissions. They say they plan to continue this carbon looper project until next year. Until next year. 의류 외에도 커튼, 침구류, 수건 등 활용 분야를 좀더 다양하게 확대해 우리가 일상생활에서 쉽게 온실가스 감축에 기여하는 새로운 패러다임이 만들어질 수 있기를 기대해 보겠습니다. 아침화보다 훨씬 더큰 규모로 이산화탄소를 포집 중인 곳도 있습니다. So, Rizin, tell us about the second place. Yes, well, let's look at Iceland near the city of Reykjavik. Here in this city is the world's biggest plant that sucks carbon dioxide straight from the air, unlike most other plants that produce or emit carbon. It's a commercial plant that uses direct air capture technology. It was installed by the Swiss startup Climaworks and the multinational research team Carbfix. 네, 거대한 팬이 돌아가고 있는데 바로 이 팬이 빨아들인 공기 중에 이산화탄소가 필터에 달라붙어 제거된다는 거죠. 
필터에 열을 가해 이산화탄소를 분리한 뒤땅 밑으로 주입해 돌 탄산염 형태로 바꿔 연구 저장되는 원리고요. Perfect. 설명이 너무 좋았어요. In addition to this large-scale CO2 recovery, the entire process is powered by eco-friendly geothermal energy. We are uh, co-located next to the world's second largest geothermal power plant, so we have um, very good renewable energy. We work together with a partner called Carbfix, and uh, they have a technology where they mix the CO2 with water, and they pump it 500 to 1,000 meters underground, and there it mineralizes Uh, within about two years. So it's actually turned into stone. So this is a very visual and very clear solution that the storage is permanent and actually there for millions of years. 기후변화에 관한 정부 간 협의체 IPCC, 지구온난화 1.5도 특별보고서에 따르면 제거해야 할 대기 중 이산화탄소의 양은 최소 천억 톤에서 최대 1조 톤에 이릅니다. So trying to cut emissions and planting trees, it's just a drop in the ocean. The challenge is so big that we need every tool in the toolbox. Or some people say three times the planet, uh, three times the arable hand on the planet that we would need to solve the problem with trees alone. And so that makes it very clear that trees won't be enough. 지구 가열의 주범인 이산화탄소를 돌에 가둬 잡는 이 기술로 기후 위기 탈출이 가능하게 될까요? 규모와 비용 부분이 궁금해지는데요. How does it look in terms of its scope and the cost? They say the Orca plant, which was installed just last September, it will capture 4,000 tons of carbon dioxide per year. Now, this may sound like a lot, but really, it's just about three seconds worth of humanity's CO2 emissions. Three seconds. 삼초라니 정말 갈 길이 먼데요. 그럼 비용은 어느 정도인가요? The current cost is estimated at $500 to $800 per ton. 네, 그럼 우리 돈으로 약 65만 원에서 100만 원 정도 되는 거네요. Right. Orca funders include Microsoft, Swiss Re, and Audi, and these are companies that can't really cut greenhouse gases directly. So there's also about 8,000 individual clients, and the hope really is that the cost will drop once the uh, Orca plant scales up and more facilities are built. That was true of renewable energy like solar, etc., and it's also true of EVs. where we see a big movement at the moment, batteries, uh, all of these industries, they managed to reduce their cost by um, 80 to 90 percent over 10 years. And we think something similar is also possible for direct air capture. The climate change is growing, and the most important thing is the reduction of the water supply. 지구 가열로 여름이면 극한 고온의 날씨가 세계 곳곳을 강타하는 건 어느덧 새로운 일상이 되어버린 것 같은데요. 올 여름도 지구촌은 극한 폭염으로 홍역을 치르고 있죠. Unprecedented heat waves. They've swept across parts of the United States and Europe with temperatures surpassing 40 degrees Celsius. Last year in 2021, we saw the ground temperature in Athens, Greece hit a blistering 55 degrees. Well, so you know the... Υπερβολική είναι η ζέστη, μας κουράζει, μας νευριάζει, μας, πο... μας πιάνουν τα νεύρα μας. Αλλά υπομονή, τι να κάνουμε. Κανγκανγκεκε 열사병을 우려한 Κρίσε 아트네는 Ακροπολίσε 등 대표 명소를 이시 폐쇄하기도 했는데요. 관광뿐만 아니라 도시 경제에도 부정적인 영향을 끼치고 있는 극한 폭염으로 인해 산불과 가뭄 등 기후 위기로 인한 자연 재해에 시달려온 아트네 씨는 지난해 유럽 최초로 최고 열 관리 책임자 Chief Heat Officer CHO를 임명하기까지 이르렀습니다. So you spoke with Athens CHO. What does the job entail? Yes, Chief Heat Officer Eleni Miravilli. I spoke to her, and she said that in the short term, part of her role is about raising people's awareness about the dangers of heat waves and to strengthen related countermeasures. But in the long run, it's all about city management and, and reducing urban heat. Right now, Athens is installing green corridors and planting trees throughout the city to help lower the temperature. There is a plan to revive their ancient aqueduct system and to bring water into the city, as well as redesign buildings. Miravilli said the Chungachun stream right here in Seoul is a benchmark example of what can be done. As you very well know, I mean, I always use Seoul as an example. 
uh, we ha we're making a very big plan now that goes across nine different municipalities where everybody's going to create different new or revive old green areas and squares to create this big long corridor that basically is also used to cool down a big part of the uh, Athens. 지난해 그리스에선 30년 만에 기록적인 폭염이 열흘간 이어지면서 1000명이 넘는 사망자가 발생한 것으로 추정됩니다. 폭염은 별다른 징후 없이 사람의 목숨을 앗아가기 때문에 소리 없는 살인자라고도 불리는데요. 시민들의 폭염에 대한 경각심을 높이기 위해 아테네시가 개발한 앱 서비스가 유럽 전체로 확대될 예정이라고요. Yes, this application service is called Extrema Global. It was developed by Athens and uh, the National Observatory of Athens. So like typhoon categories, it ranks heat risks on a four-tier system and gives locals and even tourists real-time data on nearby cooling centers and other potentially life-saving information. So people in, that live in hot climates, they usually don't take heat very seriously. They don't get take heat exposure really seriously. So these types of heat that we're having now with climate change is a, is a different animal than we're used to, but people don't understand that. Heat is equivalent to the energy dispersed by up to seven Hiroshima atomic bombs per second every day, 365 days a year, every year now. Yeah, that is the amount of heat absorbed by the ocean. Uh, it, it supports the uh, heat and energy source and moisture for extreme events like uh, cyclones and marine heat waves and uh, extreme uh, floods. 기후 위기와 해수면 상승으로 해안 지대에 거주하는 전 세계 인구의 약 40%는 침수 위험에 노출된 상황인데요. 이에 대응하기 위해 해상 도시 건설도 추진되고 있습니다. 그 시범 모델이 다름 아닌 우리나라 부산에서 진행 중인데요. So we'll be seeing a prototype of floating city here in South Korea. Yes, that's right. Right here in South Korea, the world's first floating city will be built in a redevelopment area in Busan's north port. The blue tech company Oceanics is collaborating with UN Habitat and the Busan Metropolitan Government on this project. Construction is expected to start in 2027 and be completed by the year 2030. It's really grabbing global attention because it's going to be self-sustaining in terms of water, food, and even energy use. And the idea came about a um, couple of years ago with uh, the question of how to tackle the problem of uh, climate change and guarantee uh, an another, like a second chance, let's say, for people to live uh, in, in the coastal areas, but it's harvested through uh, energy from the sun, photovoltaic panels, or energy from the wind, or energy from the waves, or energy from the currents or tides. Uh, water is actually harvested from the rain and is completely recycled. 벌집 모양의 부유식 구조물 수십 개를 연결한 형태로 만 2천여 명이 거주할 수 있게 된다고 하는데요. 자체적인 식량 생산도 가능하다고요? The idea is that residents of this floating city will be able to produce their own food with aquaponic food growing facilities. It will use BioRock, which is a technology that regenerates marine life and builds artificial coral reefs. So this is a really exciting development. We call it BioRock and it allows to not just regenerate habitat in terms of marine environments, such as coral reefs, but it increases the speed of growth of salt marshes and seaweeds five times faster than normal conditions, in order to basically not only uh, have an impact in terms of survivability of uh, uh, coastal communities, but also in terms of rejuvenating habitats of coastal communities. 공상과학 영화에서나 볼수 있었던 해상 도시를 부산 앞바다에서 실제로 보게 될 만큼 과학 기술이 발전했다니 놀랍다는 생각이 들만도 한데요. 하지만 저희가 인터뷰한 전문가들에 따르면 기후 위기 시대 인류가 직면한 문제는 현재의 과학 기술에서 해법을 충분히 찾을 수 있다고 합니다. 다만 효과적인 기후 위기 대응을 위해 발전된 과학 기술보다 더 필요한 것은 미래를 위해 책임을 다하는 정부, 기업, 개인의 협조와 노력이라는 것입니다. You can be a victim, you can be a bystander, or you can be part of the solution. All levels of government have to understand that mitigation and adaptation have to go hand in hand. And There are solutions, and we just have to invest in them and scale them, and then we can actually solve that problem as, as humanity.